Assalamualaikum warahmatullah. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Verily all praise is due to Allah. We seek his aid, we seek his help, we seek his forgiveness. We seek refuge with Allah from the evil within our own souls. Whosoever Allah guides, there is no one to misguide him. Whosoever Allah leads astray, there is no one to guide upright. I bear witness that there is no deity worthy of worship except Allah alone, and all dominions is his. And I bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam is his last messenger and seal of all the prophets. I want to first of all thank the brother at Ikra for inviting me out here to Australia to use you, you some beautiful brothers, mashallah. And when I told the brothers I called home to America, I said, man, the brothers out here have some good hearts, man. These brothers are very organized. I told them I did tours around the world, and none of my tours is organized like the brothers out here, man. They got itineraries and everything in advance. I said, man, this, I wish they was my managers in the dunya, in Jahalir, but alhamdulillah, we met in Islam. The brothers at Ikra, man, one of the things I respect about the brothers when they called me and they told me the situation was happening um, in Australia with the Muslim youth, and and the, the knowing the age at, of the brothers at Ikra, man, it was amazing to me because... It's not too many times where you see the young brothers, you know what I mean, trying to come together, caring about the other brothers, usually because as youngsters, man, we all have shortcomings. We, every Muslim have shortcomings, but we always into our own world, man. So when the brothers reached out, man, that's, that shows something special about the brothers, man, and the brothers of Ikra, they really trying to do their best. So in Islam, man, we should all support these brothers. We should all unite. Of of course, unite upon the Quran and the Sunnah. We ain't saying unite upon nothing else but the Quran and the Sunnah and support the brothers at Ikra, inshallah. The brothers wanted me to touch up on my lifestyle, which inshallah could be beneficial, man, um, to someone. Even though I lived a lot of my lifestyle doing the music and everything, I misled a lot of people. So I thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for letting me be able to come down and um and share with you guys my life story and let them know that I'm through with the music. I'm through with that life. I free myself from that stuff. So on the day of Yama Kiyama, inshallah, I can say, look, well, Allah, is the, he knows everything anyway, but at least the Muslims will know that I freed myself from that lifestyle. I grew up in New Jersey. I had parents that reverted to Islam, African-American father and a Puerto Rican mother. They converted to Islam. And at the age of three, my mother and father, they got murdered in front of me. In the time in America, a lot in Jahiliyyah, we used to have this thing where we say, "This is my Godfather," and this is this some practices we picked up from the Kufa. And unfortunately, it came into the Muslims back then, and because we didn't have the proper um, knowledge of Islam, so the people that killed my mother, father, one of them was my Godfather, and it was a group of these so-called they like gangbangers in America. They called the Nation of Islam, and um. And these are the people that killed my mother and father. So when I was three years old, they got killed. I got shot in my foot. I had a six-month-old brother in the house, and I had a four-year-old a four -year brother with me. We moved to my, with my grandparents at the time after the murders of my parents to another neighborhood. My grandparents were Christian. And in this household, it was also a couple other cousins around the same age as us. So eventually we started getting into the streets. We started um, getting into the street life because, you know, of course, the grandparents can't control us. We have no parents around. We started fumbling into the street life. At this time, I didn't have Islam, know nothing about Islam. All I knew that I had a mother and father who was Muslim. The only thing I know about Islam is we don't eat pork. And this is unfortunate. This is what a lot of the uncles and the fathers back in the day was teaching their kids. Look, we Muslim. We got a book called the Quran. We don't eat pork. So this is the only thing I know about Islam, and unfortunately, I, I strayed away from the religion of Islam. I started going to church. They started trying to force Christianity on me. I started going to church and things like this. But the main thing that happened is we turned to the streets, man. Like I was telling the brothers in America, out here in Australia, the Ikra brothers, that we turned to the streets because when we walked out our doors, it was there. We didn't have nothing else, man. This is what we had. But if we had another way out, we wouldn't be doing the things that we used to do. And unfortunately, when he was telling me what the Muslims and the, young, and the youth that's doing out here today, it seemed like, you know, they got good parents. They even have a front yard sometimes with grass in it. And, and, and we growing up, we didn't have this stuff. So we like, man, these people got these type of parents. They come from a Muslim family. They live in, in, a, in a nice area, and they run into a lifestyle that the people in America, if we had another way out, we wouldn't be running towards that life. We running away from that lifestyle. So I wanted to come explain to them um, 
the situation of the Muslims in America, man, that even the non-Muslims, man, we we run it from that lifestyle, man. So when they hear that it's people coming towards that lifestyle and chasing this life, it doesn't make sense to us. Maybe this is a, a trick of the shaitan, and, he, and he's working his magic, man. But growing up in Irvington, New Jersey, and New Jersey, I, like I said, I started getting into the streets, which unfortunately a lot of the young people in America, and especially where I was from in New Jersey, they, they turn into dealing drugs, they turn into alcohol, especially at a young age because either their parents are dead, like, like I was telling the brothers, when I grew up without no parents, it was normal to me. When I go and say I don't have a mother and father, the other people in the neighborhood wasn't like, whoa, you don't have a mother and father? I thought it was normal until people started reacting when I got older, like, you don't have a mother and father? Oh, man, because growing up in the hood, this is normal, man. When you don't got a mother and father, this and this, okay, so what? Let's go in the play, park and play. Let's go get some candy. This is how the people is in the inner city because this is a normal lifestyle. Majority of the fathers are locked up. If they're not on drugs, they're either dead. So this is what happened, especially in the African-American community, until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought Islam to us. That was the only way out of that darkness was Islam. And that's why you got so many people in America, America in generally, just run into the religion of Islam. You know, they run into it head on. And that's the only thing we have out there, alhamdulillah. So basically, when I turned to the streets and everything, and I started doing music. This is the time where I started writing and trying to get into music. And it was a childhood friend of mine's name, Gaddafi. This was his, his, his rap name. His name was Gaddafi. I ran into Gaddafi after I didn't see him in some time, and I found out that he was a rap. He was rapping, doing music also, and he, his brother was Tupac Shakur. So his mother said, look, when Tupac coming to New York, I'm going to introduce you. Boom, boom, boom. Y'all get together. Things like that, inshallah. So we got together when I met Tupac. I, I already got kicked out of high school, unfortunately, but alhamdulillah, I'm going to go back. So any kids in here, stay in school, man. It's very important. I don't care if you think you're a gangster, you think you're tough, you think you're a thug. It's going to come a time in your life where you're going to wish you would have stayed in school. So stay in school while you're still in school. And uh, alhamdulillah, now I have to go back and get my GED and get my high school diploma and, you know, take time out. So while you guys are already in school, man, don't don't stay in school, you know, because... I don't care wherever you go, man. Nobody likes a dummy. You know what I mean? They don't respect people that don't have no knowledge. You don't get a job. They look down on you. Even in the land of the Muslims, man. When I try to do Hijra, I'm thinking, man, maybe I, I left this music. Let me go to the land of the Muslims and get a job. They said, where's your diploma? Where's your paperwork? So paperwork, school, all that stuff talk. So stay in school, man. And, and back to the, the story. I started doing music with Pac. And I moved out of Irvington, New Jersey, Newark, New Jersey, to Atlanta. And then I, I went to Los Angeles, California. When I went to Los Angeles, this was at a time where Tupac signed to a record label called Death Row Records. Now, going to Los Angeles, man, this was a part of my life that changed me because, like I said, I was 16, 17 years old, no mother and father. We just signed record deals to one of the biggest rap labels, rap record commercial labels in the, in, in the world. But... The other part about it, the people who rap record, the rap record that we signed to, the contract, these was gangsters, man. They was bloods. They was criminals. They was thugs. They was killers that got money and got into the music industry with millions. So ain't nothing, nothing worse than people that's from the streets and you give them a bunch of, bunch of money. You know what I mean? That make it even worse than the street. So we signed, into, we signed to this record label, man. And like we said, you can imagine the things that we got into. Um... You know, some stuff I don't want to repeat for the kids because I don't even want them to think it's okay to even, you know, to do some of these things. But we got into a lot of crazy things. And that, and it took the life of Tupac Shakur, this lifestyle of rapping and the music and then all this stuff. At the age of 25, Tupac got killed in Las Vegas. So this was a point when Tupac died. I said, look, man, everybody that I'm getting close to, Tupac was like a big brother, a father figure to me. Now he's no longer. He's died. He got killed. A couple months later... You know, a couple months before Tupac got killed, my grandmother who raised me died. A couple months later after Tupac got killed, I had a brother that committed suicide. Then a couple months after Tupac, my brother got killed, in the same year, Gaddafi, who introduced me to Tupac, got murdered by my cousin. So this was a, a changing point in my life where I said, man, everybody around me is dying. What am I going to do with my life? I'm living, I'm living a lifestyle that I know this is unnatural. So I started searching. I'm starting to search. And from the hikmah of Allah, one day I was in a recording studio. And I was, I was like intoxicated. I was messed up, and I got into a fight with my little brother. And this was a time where I was so angry, man. I used to have so much anger in me when I went outside, and I'm punching the car windows and this and this. Nobody would dare to try to break it up. And alhamdulillah, man, it was a Muslim that happened to be in the parking lot. I didn't know this guy from nowhere. He walked up to me, 
And he had good character, mashallah. He was smiling. He said, what's your name? What is wrong with you? Why is you doing this? Instead of him just grabbing me, stop what you're doing, yelling at me, he used hikmah. He calmed me down until next thing I know I'm having a conversation with this, this stranger. And usually in America, when a stranger walk up to you, you like you go, you go, know to go the other way because you're like, man, this guy, he's he crazy. And America is so bad when a person smiles and say hi, you think he's crazy. He wants something. You know what I mean? Like, oh, man, this dude just smiled at me right here. Let's go across the street. He's up to something. You know what I mean? So when I seen that this person came to me smiling, that good character, I said, something's different about this guy, man. Let me just hear this guy out. So he started talking to me. He said, what's your name? I said, my name is Muta, this and this and this. He said, I'm Muslim. I said, I'm Muslim too. And like I said, I don't know nothing about Islam. You know, all I knew back in the day was the nation of Islam. And I had hatred in my heart because I thought that these are people that killed my parents. So I said, I will never be a Muslim. Muslim killed my parents. Until I, until I noticed, I learned more, and I read, and I noticed that the nation of Islam wasn't Muslims. And when I read about the nation of Islam, and I read about the true Islam, I said, well, the nation of Islam is no different than the KKK or the Nazis. It's more like a racist gang, you know what I mean? Where the brothers and sisters, I'm here to let you know that they're not Muslims. You can't even give them the salams because they never, they're not Muslims. Put it that way. They, they, they believe in shirk and they believe in all types of stuff. But you can, you can go check on it on your own, inshallah. So when I learned that the nation of Islam wasn't Muslim and that it's another way of Islam, it's a true way of Islam. And I learned about the Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I started reading more about him. So the God kept inviting me to come to Juma prayer. And when I went to Juma prayer with him, finally, I remember when it was the brothers in the, ma the masjid, they had such good characters. Characters. Everybody was smiling when they see me. They hug me, and you know what I mean. We not used to this stuff in the streets in the music industry. You like, you know, even though you know about Muslims and you, you see Michael X movie, it changed their life. But this is the first time I was really up and close to some brothers that actually prayed and did salat. And um, so when it was time for salat, I remember they said, "Just do what we do, follow us." And I remember when I put my head down to the floor. This was the first time I put my head down to the floor. And I remember saying, subhanAllah, just humbling myself to the, my head to the ground. It just, I felt some type of peace, you know what I mean? Because i never done that before. So I put my head to the floor and I said, man, I thought I'd never do nothing. Like, I ain't even think about doing something like this. But it was an inner peace that I had. So after that, man, I ran home. I said, man, I want to go watch the Michael X movie again. I want to go get books on Islam. Something just hit me, man, when I started reading and reading more. And I watched the Michael X movie again and I paid attention to it. And I said, you know what? I want to go to Hajj. I had the money, alhamdulillah, I said, I need to go to Hajj. Alhamdulillah, about a year later, maybe earlier than that, Allah made it easy, I was able to go to Hajj. So I got up, and when I went to Saudi Arabia, I remember walking down, walking in the street, and I seen a guy in Medina smiling at me. So I'm like, who is this guy looking at? What is this guy smiling at? This and this, you know, I'm still got Jahaliya in me. Like I said, in America, you get smiled at, you think some these people crazy. So I'm like, man, why is this brother smiling at me? So the guy walked to me. He had a beard and he had the thobe on. He said, Muta, you don't remember me. And when I heard his voice, it was a guy that was a friend of Gaddafi that we used to roll together in Jahaliya. The last time I saw him, he got locked up. He got locked up for a weapon in a stolen car. And I, he got locked up. He became converted to Islam in jail. And when he became, came out of jail, the first thing he did while he was in jail, he kept filling out applications to go to the University of Medina. And alhamdulillah, they accepted him. So soon he got out of jail, he left everything in America and just went to Medina. And alhamdulillah, he's still there right now studying, man. So when I ran into this brother, it was amazing seeing him. I said, man, the last time I seen you, you, were just, you got locked up with a gun. He said, that's crazy because about a month ago, somebody sent me pictures of you. And in the pictures of you, they had you looking crazy, man. You was drunk and you this and this around you. And then I see, we, we alhamdulillah, we was able to find each other in the city of Medina. And it was a blessing getting with the brother because he was teaching me the rights of Hajj and things like that. So I came back from um, Saudi Arabia, and like I said, I was doing the music. I didn't know too much about the music and Islam. I kept doing music, but this time I tried to clean it up. And um, unfortunately, when I came back, I started hanging with, you know, people, wrong people, man. Even though they was Muslim, but it's very important who we, who we take as friends. Even the Prophet Sallallahu said, the man is on the religion of his companion, so choose your companion wisely. So when I came back from Hajj, I remember having this feeling in my body, man, where I said, man, this is the best feeling in the world. I don't know what it is. No drugs, no alcohol. Never made me feel like this. I even thought it was the Zam Zam water. I said, man, maybe I'm drunk off of Zam Zam water, man. But this is this felt so good to me, man, that I didn't know what it was. It was like a, for real, man, wallahi, man. And I remember I started hanging with the wrong people, man. And, and I remember that feeling slowly but surely started going away. 
And I'm like, what is it, man? What is the feeling? Maybe the Zan Zan water wearing out, man. But alhamdulillah, the feeling went away. And I noticed what I think now, and this is my own thinking, man. Allah knows best, but I think what it was that I was hanging around with the wrong people. And like the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he said, you can choose your friend two ways. As one, to just to make the hadith quick, as a man that sell oil, you must, either he gonna give you some oil for free, or you're going to smell good, the oil you're going to be on your clothes, or another way to feel it, that you choose a bag of pain, as if a man that work in a, um, a coal shop, he, he do coal ironing, either he's going to burn your clothes from the fire, and the, or you're going to get the bad stench of the coal and the smell on your clothes. So that's what happened to me, man. I started hanging with the wrong people, and slowly but surely, I started slipping away from my dean. And alhamdulillah, um, Allah guided me when I started hanging with the good, I started finding, I found brothers that's on the hawk, and that's what uh, eventually it, it led me to leaving the music industry. A lot opened my eyes and noticed that, man, the music industry is basically a tool of the shaitan. And unfortunately, one of the main things that the music do is tear our kids apart. It tear the kids, man, without the kids even knowing what hit them, man. It, it, if you go around and you look at the Muslim countries and, and the Muslim cities and the, and the Muslim neighborhoods, majority of the problem inside that city Besides that, as Muslims, we don't know Tawheed properly. That's the number one thing that, that's the problem with all our, us Muslims. We don't understand Tawheed properly, but the music is destroying our youth. And when a brother told me that was going on with the youth, man, and that they listening to rap artists and that they loving these rappers and everybody listening up to Tupac, I said, man, that's crazy. Because in America, all the gangsters in the inner city, they becoming Muslims. All the gangsters in America is running to Islam. And when he told me that these Muslims is going the opposite way, this is amazing. I said, subhanAllah, this is crazy. Like you said, like the brother said, these are Arabs that's born Muslim that speak Arabic. Do you know brothers like me that convert to Islam, we have struggled to learn the Arabic language? Like the brother said, man, I pray to Allah, let me marry a righteous, not just an Arab woman, a righteous Arab woman that I know that I can teach my kids the Arabic language and I can know the language of the Quran and the Sunnah. And these are people, when he said, these are Muslims that have that tongue. Don't know how good they got, alhamdulillah, they born Muslim. We all born Muslim. We taking our religion for granted. When you come to America, man, I had friends that used to be killers, bank robbers, murderers. Became Muslim, you won't hear a cuss word come out their mouth. You won't even think, they won't even step on a fly, man. They, that's like the Sahabas was. The Sahabas was humble individuals. They kept a smile on their face. But then on the battlefield, they was lions, man. This is how we supposed to be as Muslims. And unfortunately, man, we don't even know what's hitting the Muslims, man. We don't even know what's hitting the Muslims. The brothers out here, they running around, they trying to be gangsters, man. And, and the brother told me the, 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 neighbor, the Muslim neighborhoods, this is where the most crime happened. Am I right? Mm -hmm. The Muslim neighborhoods is like the worst neighborhoods. Yeah. I said, subhanAllah, in America, the ghettos, when the Muslims move into the ghettos, the neighborhood get cleaned up. The drug dealers say, okay, it's time to go. We know they ain't going to have the stuff around their wives or their daughters. We know this. This is what happened. The community I belong to used to be nothing but blood, gangbangers. They chased them up out of there to the point where the bloods called the police and said, these Muslims are crazy. <laughs> they pack, and it, wallahi, they packed their stuff and moved out the neighborhood. Now when you go in the neighborhoods, it's nothing but Muslim kids. Even the Kufar in America, when they want to go in the, in, the, in the ghetto, when they want to go to a nice neighborhood, they move in the neighborhoods of the Muslims. Because they know, man, once the Muslims get in that neighborhood, these Muslims was the gangsters, man. They became Muslim, alhamdulillah, and they take their deen very serious, man. I was telling a brother, man, it's some African-Americans, kids, man. This brother has some kids, mashallah. They speak nothing but Arabic. In the middle of America, man, these American kids, he said, you know what? My kids speaking nothing but Arabic, man. Any, they want to talk to them, they're going to have to learn Arabic in America. This is what the Muslims are saying back there, man. So to know that these kids, alhamdulillah, that we born Muslims, majority of you kids are Arabs. You come from an um, Arab family. You come from a Muslim background. And you running away from your deen, this doesn't make sense, man. And, and, and then you running away from your deen and you looking up to people in America. You looking up to the rap artists. Majority of the rap artists are becoming Muslims. Major like I said, this is no lie, majority of the gangsters, man, are Muslims. And people respect the Muslims in America, man. The re people respect even the gangsters. When a Muslim... When the, when the Muslim sister, for example, I'm going to tell you a story. When the Muslim sisters walk down the street, the thugs and the gangsters, they get out the way. They say, watch out, man. Here come the sister. When the, when the kufar, the, the non-Muslim women walk down the street, they have no respect for their own woman. The Muslims, we don't respect our women. But the kufar in America, they respect the Muslims. When you go to certain Muslim neighborhoods in certain countries, we don't even have respect for our own Muslim women, man. And we Muslims. 
you, I'll take you guys to America. I'll say, look, I'm going to put you in the middle of the good, the middle of the hood. All you see, alhamdulillah, like I was telling the brothers, man, I said, you know what? I just came from Philadelphia. It was amazing to see the kufar with beards. The kufar had their pants above their ankle. I said, salam alaikum. They said, we ain't Muslim. They dressing like the Muslims, man. It's even to a point that they made long T-shirts. I'm talking about these are the thugs and the gangsters walking in the street with long T-shirts that come down in here because they want to be like the Muslims. And this is how we supposed to be, man. They supposed to want to be like our kids. We don't supposed to be wanting to be like these people, man. If you read the history of the Arabs, man, these, I know gangsters that read Umar Ibn Khattab's story and said, you know what, I'm not a gangster compared to what this man went to. Not to say that Umar is a gangster, alhamdulillah, he stood firm. But I know people read Umar's life story. When I read his life story, I said, this is a miracle. Islam is the hot. Look at the stories of the Sahabas. Look at the stories of the Arabs, man, when nobody even wanted to conquer the Arabia. They said, who want these people, man? Who want to conquer this stuff, man? All they have is dates and, and sand. Allah gave them Islam. Look what happened when the Muslims practiced their deen firmly. Look how Islam spread all over the world, alhamdulillah. Look how Islam took people like Umar ibn Qatar, Radi Al-Anu, and did what he did to them. Abu Bakr, man, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said you take the Ummah and Abu Bakr and weigh the Iman. Abu Bakr weighed the whole um, the Ummah with his Iman. These are the people we should be looking up to, man, instead of Tupac, instead of the outlaws. Because unfortunately, the people in America, y'all do not believe me, man, they all searching. The people's in the inner city, they all searching for something. And when they finally, and when they keep searching, they run to Islam. This is what happened to the brothers in America, man. They get Islam and they hold firm to it, man. Where they try to, we try to learn the Arabic language. We dying to learn the Arabic language, man. And alhamdulillah, if I can t cut somebody's tongue out and sew it on my eyes and speak Arabic, I might do that, man. I might have to find one of you little kids of it. <laughs> nah, but alhamdulillah, not the, the joke, man, but... Let's just recognize that we do have something beautiful, man, that Allah bless us to be Muslims, that Allah bless you to speak Arabic, man, that Allah bless us to have the best people. Allah said that the, the best nation ever raised up was the Muslims. Look at the life of the Sahabas, man. Like I said, when I read their stories, I know gangsters that I've seen on the streets. I've seen or I've been around this stuff. I can't compare the gangsters to the Sahabas before Islam. I can't, man. I can't compare what these people was on and then when they became Muslim, how they just they stood firm, man. Where they just was, read the story. Let's all go back and start studying the Salaf, man, like how we supposed to. Go study the true Arabs, man. How before Islam, man, they, they, even before Islam, the Arabs didn't like to lie. They was honorable. They took care of their guests. Now we Muslims, we have Muslims. Now we have Islam. We lie. We cheat each other as Muslims. If you look before Islam came, the Arabs were so honorable, they would have never done that. We Muslims and now we doing that. This stuff don't make no sense, man. This stuff don't make no sense for us, man. And, and one of the main things, because we don't know Tawheed properly. We don't know Tawheed, and I'm talking to myself first, before we make a mistake and before we do something wrong, do we really know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is above the seven heavens watching us? Do we know that Allah knows what's in our soul what we think about? Before we do something, do we think that it's two angels writing stuff down, man? And, then we, and do we think about them two angels that's going to question us in that grave? And they said it's severe. Don't think just because we said, Shadu wa la ilaha illa Allah, we okay. Because in Islam, we got to have hope and fear, man. If you have too much hope, oh, I'm going to Jannah, I, I say I'm Muslim, we forgive, that's wrong, man. If you have too much fear, oh, Allah will never forgive us, this and this, you got to have hope and fear, man. We got to hope that Allah accept our deeds. We got to hope just because we born Muslim, we're going to die Muslim. We can't take this stuff for granted, man. We can't say, oh, we Muslim, we said, la la ila la, because the Prophet Islam said it would be 73 sects of Muslims. All of them in the fire except for one. We hope that Allah guide us and put us on the right path. We can't take this stuff for granted, man, because it's serious. None of us can get up right now and say, when we walk out this door, we're not going to drop dead. I don't care if you're five years old, seven years old, 50 years old. Who can guarantee when we get in our car, we won't crash and die? None of us can guarantee that tonight. And when the last time we told our parents we love them? When the last time we told our parents we love them, man, people disrespecting their parents, like I said, I never had a mother and father. When a brother tell me what the Muslims are doing to their parents, the Arabs, man, because the reason why I keep saying Arab, like the brother said, man, when I read the history of the Arabs, this is the people I looked up to, man. When I read the stories of the Sahabas, this is what I said, man. I've I been around these rappers. I know they fake. I've been in, I've done it, man. I know they fake. I know when, they, when you go home and listen to their record and you want to carry a gun, they in a mansion. They in mansions with air conditioners laughing at y'all. Like, let them go buy my records and kill each other. I'm through with that life because they rich already. We stupid enough to run around and do what they rapping about. That, that's like the biggest trick of the shaitan, man. He know he can't come to you and say, look, man, I want you to be a Muslim no more. They can't walk up to us and say, give up your religion. But what they can do is say, listen to this CD. 
Listen to this rap artist. Won't you try to be dressed like this rap artist? Won't you start thinking like this rap artist? Don't even speak Arabic no more. Because the, 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 the best way to, to destroy a nation is to take away their language. Because when you take away their language and give them your language, now they're going to think in your language. Now they're going to think like we Americans and we think in English and we thinking like that. We're not even thinking in the Arabic language no more. This is sad. I'm not saying, even though we Australians, man, or Americans and we live in the West, okay, we, we here. But don't give up the language of Islam. Be proud of what we are. Be proud that we be Muslim because no, people respect you for who you are, man. People don't respect when you try to fit in like them. They don't respect us when we want to be like their kids, man. When we got the best people to walk the face of the earth to look up to. We got the best people to look up to, man. Look at, we got the, the Sahabas, Aki. We got these people, the Tabi'een. We got the Tabi Tabi'een, who the Prophet said, follow these three generations. Hold on to my Quran and the Sunnah, we'll never go astray. This is real talk. When Tupac say something, we listen to Tupac, right? This is the talk of the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa where Allah said he don't speak from his own desires. This is real talk. This is going to help us in the next life or in this life. When we're in that grave, it's going to be too late to come back and say, I wish I would have listened to my mother and father. I wish I would have followed the sunnah. Just because I wanted to get a job, I just said, the hell with the sunnah, I'm going to get a job. I'm going to do whatever I do to get this job, just so I can survive and provide for my family, not knowing that Allah is the one who provides. We sell our soul and our religion like it's nothing, not knowing that Allah is the one who provides for us, man. Not the boss. This is, this is Allah's religion, man. He created this world. If we follow what Allah tells us to follow, nothing will go wrong to us, man. Our provision will be walking in front of our doors, man. This is what we got to think as Muslims, man. We got to learn to heed. We got to know who, that Allah is more powerful. Instead of fearing somebody, Allah is more powerful. Allah is watching us. Huh? He sees everything. We going to die. Allah says in the Quran, every soul shall taste death. We have to die. We're going to get raised up and face Allah. This is real talk. I've seen too many people get killed. For me to be playing, when I read that verse, every soul shall taste death, I know firsthand that we're going to taste death. Because I've seen my mother and father. I've seen all my friends. It wasn't just my mother and father got killed in front of me. I've seen friends get murdered in front of me, man. I seen people get shot in front of me. I seen this stuff growing up. It wasn't just a one-time thing. I used to think this was a normal lifestyle, man. Before Islam came into the inner city, this is what I thought, this is how you're supposed to live. Kill this dude before he killed me. Do this before that happened, man. Until when Islam came, man, the brothers in America are running towards the religion of Islam. Here we are right here, born into Muslim families. We speak the Arabic language. We're taking it for granted. We're taking it for granted, man. So the main thing is, man, to tell the kids, especially the ones who talking back to their parents. I was telling Brother Fady, man, in America, even when we was thugs, we on the porch, we cursing, we doing crazy stuff. If a parent opened that door, we shutting up. I had my grandmother that I respected my grandmother so much that if one of my friends cursed around my grandmother, I might have to beat you up. This is the respect we have for our parents. Even when the elder people walk down the street, we get out of their way. We stop cursing. We stop doing bad stuff. We have respect for elder people, man. We don't just disrespect our parents and talk to people any kind of way, man. We don't do this type of stuff, especially as Muslims, man. When the Prophet said the, the jinn is at the feet of the mother. You know what I mean? This is the mother who, the pro, like it's a story where one of the Sahaba said, if he do Hajj, the Sheikh know better than me, man. But if you do Hajj a couple times, can I repay my mother? He said, no, you still can't repay your mother doing Hajj or carrying on your back. Something like that, right, Sheikh? Something like that. So that lets you know it's serious that we got to take our parents and love our parents, man. Go home tonight, tell your mother and father you love them. Because we don't know when they're going to snatch your mother and father's soul or when they're going to snatch our soul. You know what I mean? We Muslims, man. We got to live like Muslims. We got to live like Muslims, man. We got the, the, the people in Australia supposed to say, I want to be like these Muslims. Every time I see them, they have a smile on their face. They have a glow. I like the way they dress. They kids supposed to say, look, man, I like the way they dress. I want to dress like them. These people stick together. Look at these Muslims, man. This is what we want to be like. This is what we, as Muslims, this side of the, the, the non-believers are supposed to look at us, and they're supposed to want to be like us. We leaders, bro. We got a lot of people to look Khalid Ibn Walid. We got people to look up that Tupac can't come close to. These people, 50 cents in them, can't come close to what these people went through, bro. They, went, they lived it for real. They really lived that life, man. I'm talking about they lived that life, man. But they did it for the sake of Allah. They ain't do it for this dunya. They did it for the sake of Allah, man. These are the people we're supposed to look up to, man. And the reason why we're going through what we're going through because we're turning our back on our religion. The Prophet said Allah will humiliate us because we turn our back on our religion and he will, not, he will not stop until we return to our religion. So when you wonder what's going around the world, you blaming everybody else. But the Prophet said predicted this stuff. He said this is going to happen to the Muslims. And the reason why this is happening to the Muslims is because the Muslims are going to do this. 
They're going to chase the cattle. They're going to love this dunya. They're going to turn their back on their religion. So Allah going to humiliate the Muslims until they return back to their religion. It ain't about let's go to the embassy, run around acting like barbarians. Because I don't know about you guys in America, when they seen the Muslims at the embassies, when they did the pictures of the Prophet Sallallahu guess what they said? I heard them. We knew they was barbarians. Look at them. They was laughing at us. They said, look, this is what we want them. Islam is a quiet religion, man. The scholars said this is a quiet religion. When they did this stuff to the Sahabas, you didn't see Abu Bakr say, meet me at the Kaaba, let's march. They went and learned their deen, man. They stood, they stood patient, learned their deen. They've been doing this stuff to the Prophet Islam from day one. When they do a picture, the man, the Muslims have no one to blame but ourselves, man. We went around and the Muslims hurt more Muslims in that event than anything else. To the point when I heard Americans say, I knew that these people was barbarians, man. When the enemies of Islam were saying, look how we got them, this is what we want them to do. Islam is a quiet religion, man. We know, that if we knew knowledge, we would know that this stuff is going to happen. Because it's in the Quran and the Sunnah. And it's a solution for it. The Prophet Islam said this was going to happen to the Muslims. And then this is going to happen to the Muslims. And then he said, but this is why this is happening to the Muslims. The Muslims going to love this dunya so much that they don't even care, man. They're going to turn their back on their deen and Allah going to humiliate them until they return back to the Quran and the Sunnah. The Quran and the Sunnah, the way the Sahabas practice it, the way the, 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 the Tabi'een practice it, and the way the Tabi Tabi'een practice it. This is how we learn our religion, man. Most of us, even Allah says in the Quran, man, most of the people follow the religion just because they follow the religion of their fathers. And unfortunately, that's happening nowadays to us Muslims. We become Muslim just because our mother and father was Muslim, just like the Christians and the Jews. You ask them, you a Muslim? Oh, my mother and father Muslim. We don't even know our deen, bro. We don't even know why we Muslim. We don't even know that the Quran is so powerful that Allah said if you put it on the mountain, the mountain will crumble. We have that book. We have this stuff, man. We got a religion that Allah preserve. Not to disrespect no other religion, but, man, every month they come out with a new Bible. We should thank Allah that, look, man, he preserved our Quran. Every year they have a new Bible to make them more confused, man. Not to disrespect no religion, but we should say, look, Man, I, I love Allah. He didn't do this to our religion. He, we got the same Quran that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that the angel Jibril, alayhi salam, brung down to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, man. So we need to return back to our religion. The youth need to wake up and stop trying to chase after the kufar and doing what they want to do because they run into towards Islam. So we need to wake up, man, come back to our deen, stop being like these people, man, look up to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Sahabas, respect our parents, because some people didn't have parents. Like me, I didn't have a mother and father. So when I see some people talking bad to their mother and father, I can't respect people like that, man, because I didn't have a mother and father. You have a mother and father, and you're still treating them like they're you treating them bad, man. We can't do like this. As Muslims, man, let's return to our deen. Let's return to the deen properly. Let's all go home and say, you know what? I'm going to stop practicing my religion traditional and cultural. I'm going to try to find out the proper way to practice this deen according to the Quran and the Sunnah. How many of us has Sahih Bukhari and Sahih Muslim in our house? If we don't have Sahih Bukhari and Sahih Muslim, how can we say we're on the Sunnah? We don't know the Sunnah, we don't know the Quran because the Sunnah explains the Quran. Like the Prophet said, whoa, it's going to come a time where it's going to be a man sitting on his couch. Somebody going to bring him a narration, a hadith of mine. He going to say, I don't want to hear the hadith. The Quran is enough for me. The Prophet said, destruction to that man. Because I'm telling you right now, for example, you, you have to take my sunnah. I'm telling you the meat of a donkey is haram. Do you see that in the Quran? So Allah, the Prophet tells us that we have to follow the sunnah, man. Because if it were not the sunnah, how do we know how to pray? How do we know the stuff? So let's not turn our back on the sunnah, man. It's very important. This is what they want us to do. This is what they want us to do, man. The, like the man, one of the sheikhs said, man, when they asked him, sheikh, okay, the people disrespecting the prophet, if you don't want us to march around, what should we do then? What should we do? He said, know what you should do that hurt them more than anything? When they look at you, they see that the man that died 1,400 years ago, the prophet Muhammad, Islam, his religion is still on you. When they look at him, they see his religion is on your clothes. His religion is in your character. This is what they don't want to see, man. They don't want to see, man, how these people nowadays holding on to the Quran and the Sunnah like this. That's what they hate, man. But when you run around like barbarians, this is what they love. Because the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam didn't do this, man. So let's t return back to our religion, starting with me, man. Let's all pray. Let's all come together, unite upon the Quran and the Sunnah. And we'll see things change. Because I've never been more happy in my life than when I became Muslim. Like I said, I had houses, man. I had three houses at one time I couldn't even live in. I had brand new cars. Every time a car come out, I go get it. None of that stuff made me happy. You run into that lifestyle, it's dis the depression. I used to be so paranoid I had to leave the house every day with a gun. I used to have to buy dogs two or 300 pounds because I'm scared. I had to have a dog sleeping outside and a dog sleeping in, and a dog sleeping in the house. And some nights I used to go to sleep with the gun under the pillow. Is this normal? But when you become Muslim, Allah give you peace. 
You don't have to fear no one but Allah. Now you know whatever happened is happening because Allah wanted to happen this way. This stuff don't make you happy, man. I never been, and I'm, I'm here to tell you right now, I don't have three houses anymore. I don't have any cars no more, and I swear to Allah, Wallahi, I never been more happy in my life than I am right now. I swear to God, if a person come in with a billion dollars and say, give up your deen, I would never do it for the sake of this deen. Because this is no true success but through Islam. And I know that, man. So, man, please, let's return back to our Quran, man, and, and the Sunnah, man, and respect the elders. And the elders and the young said, let's unite, inshallah. And that's about it, man. My feet want to come up. And Jazakallah khair, uh, brother Napoleon. Well, brother, the only thing that came to my mind is a verse. Maybe as much as we study that verse, we would not understand that verse until we meet brothers like yourself. And this is something for myself and you brothers, especially those who are born Muslims. Allah Azza wa Jal, he says, Ya ayyuhu alladheena amanu man yartadda minkum an deena fasafa yati allahu biqawmin yuhibbuhum wa yuhibbunahu adhillatan ala al-mu'minin a'izzatan ala al-kafirin Please, brothers and sisters, listen to this verse. And maybe looking at a brother like Napoleon, you'll understand that verse deeply. Allah Almighty, he says, all those who believe, whoever turns away from their religion, all those who believe, whoever turns away from their religion, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will replace them with other people. It's not an issue on Allah azza wa jal. Whoever turns away from Islam and goes to the kufr, <coughs> and whoever turns away from the iman and goes to the gangsterhood, and whoever turns away from the haq and goes to the false and the battle, well, Allah Azza wa Jal made it very clear. This does not concern Allah or worry Allah Azza wa Jal. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Allah will get better people than you. And those better people Allah Azza wa Jal mentioned. And I guess look, looking at brother Napoleon, and inshallah he is one of them. Yuhibbuhum wa yuhibbuna. Allah loves them and they love Allah. A brother speaking from his heart, and you could feel the love from, of his heart to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And no doubt that every single brother, he loves this brother because this is a sign of Allah loving this brother. All those who believe, whoever turns away from the deen of Allah, Allah will replace them with people who Allah loves and they love Allah. And what's the other thing? You want to hear the other attribute? Look at this brother and then you understand. kafirin. They are very humble towards the believers. They are very humble towards the Muslims. They look up to the Muslims and love the Muslims. They love the Muslims and look up to the Muslims and become and behave as Muslims. They are proud and they have pride over the kufr. This is the unfortunate thing. As brother was saying that Muslims are leaving their faith that came from Allah. For the faith that came from people as he mentioned like Tupac or gangsters or people on the Dalal and kufr. We are leaving a deen and a path that came from Allah from the above the heavens. For a path. That only takes us to hell and takes us to darkness. So my brothers, my sisters, take this moment as an opportunity for you. And I'll take this moment as an opportunity for myself to remind myself, who am I? I'm a Muslim. I'm not a gangster. I'm a Muslim and I'm proud to be a Muslim. I'm not a gangster. I never accept to be a gangster. I never accept to be people of the street. But I'm proud of my religion, and I'm proud of my deen, and I'm proud of my prophet, and I'm proud of my Quran. This is something we have in our hearts, my brothers and sisters. But shaitan is working so hard to take us away from the deen of Allah Azza wa Jal. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala use people like this brother, as the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, خِيَارُكُمْ فِي الْجَاهِلِيَّةِ خِيَارُكُمْ فِي الْإِسْلَامِ They're the best among you in the jahiliyyah, in the corruption, in the ignorant days are the best among you in, when they come in the deen. This brother, as he said, coming from the lowest of darkness. Look at him now. He is in the highest of light. From being a caller to the corruption, and now Allahu Akbar, Allah gained all this youth to come and listen to your brother, to become a caller of the haqq. This is a sign 
of what the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had mentioned. سَيَبْلُغُ هَذَا الْأَمْرُ مَا بَلَغَ اللَّيْلُ وَالنَّهَارُ That this deen, this matter, this religion, this word of لا إله إلا الله محمد رسول الله will reach everywhere the way they and not reach everywhere. Who would thought 14 centuries ago, 14 centuries ago, that someone like this brother, with a group like this brothers, would sit at the end of this world talking about Allah and his Prophet. This is the sign of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu And this is the sign of the prophecy. And this is the sign of Islam. And this is the sign of the victory of Islam. So my brothers and sisters, and especially the Shabab, take this, take this as a reminder. وَذَكِّرْ فَإِنَّ الذِّكْرَ تَنْفَعَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ Remind indeed the reminder benefits the believers. So take this as a reminder. Then let it go from one ear and let it slip the other ear. Because once you walk out of here, a thousand shaitan will attack you to make you forget what you've heard tonight. Why? Because shaitan does not want to see you on the right path. Shaitan does not want to see you go into the paradise. Shaitan wants to take you on a deviated path. And shaitan wants to make sure you end up in the hellfire. So be proud of your deen, my brothers. Be proud of your religion. Be proud of your Islam. And always say it proud and loud. I am proud to be a Muslim. And for you, brother, we say Allahu Akbar. We say Allahu Akbar. And we say Allahu Akbar. Because this is a sign of victory. This is a sign of victory. Especially what's happening at this moment. With the whole world is gathering to attack the Islam and the Muslims. But Allah Azza wa Jal wants at this moment Islam to rise in the West. And Islam will rise in the West. And rise in the East and the West. And South and North by the will of Allah. Because this is the deen of Allah. And Allah Azza wa Jal will never be defeated. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will never be disgraced. And Allah Azza wa Jal does not disgrace his religion. And does not disgrace the Muslims. May Allah reward you brother. Wallahi he enlightened our hearts. And he enlightened the hearts of Allah brothers and sisters. And inshallah Allah will make you. As the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said. A door, an opening door to the good. And a closed door to the corruption. An opening door to the good. And a closed door to the corruption. And I ask Allah that he makes every single one of us here. An opening door to the good. And a closed door to the corruption. And inshallah together brothers. Inshallah we will make that difference. We will make people look at the Islam and the Muslims. The true image and picture the way they should be looked at. The Muslims used to be looked up to. As he said yes. Wallahi, ikhwan, it makes you feel bad that we're not a good example. We came here instead of us showing the good picture of Islam. We're adapting the wrong and bad and ugly habits. And not only that, we're even perfecting that and making it even to be even worse. But ikhwani, we should be presenting Islam in the best figure, in the best presentation. We're all ambassadors, as brother said. We're all representing the deen of Allah and the deen of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Every single one of us here is responsible to represent the deen of Allah azza wa jal. And every single one of you and every single one of us is responsible to represent the deen of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. For that, my brothers, take tonight as an opportunity to change your life. If this brother changed his life from where he is, you can change your life. If this brother saying what he's saying about himself, where he is and now support and all the things he experienced, you can change your life. And remember my brothers and sisters, if you want Allah's support, Allah does not reject anyone that knocks on his gates. Allah Azza wa Jal does not reject anyone that knocks on his gates. You go tonight to repent to Allah and you find Allah waiting for you before you get to him. So go to Allah Azza wa Jal. And repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And remember what Allah says, O oh, the son of Adam, if you come back to me, worshipping me, no one but me, I will forgive you. O oh, the son of Adam, if you come to me with this whole world full of sins, I'll come back to you with this whole world full of mercy. O oh, the son of Adam, come to me. And I'll never reject you. Get close to me one hand span. I'll get closer to you two hand span. Get closer to me one arm's length. I'll get closer to you two arm's length. Come to me walking. Oh, come to you running. This is Allah. This is Allah. So my brothers, repent to Allah Azza wa Jal. Take tonight as a night of repentance. And you'll find Allah waiting for you. And the moment that the servant of Allah repents to Allah is the most happiest moment. 
Allah is more happier. Allah is more happier when his servants turn to him and repent to him than a mother losing her child and then she finds him after a few days. This is your Lord, Ikhwani. Turn to Allah Azza wa Jal. And once again, we really thank you, brother. Jazakallah khair. May Allah Azza wa Jal reward you. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala strengthen you. And may Allah Azza wa Jal use and use all the brothers. Jazakumullah khair. To listen to or download more Islamic lectures, please visit www.islamicmedia.com.au